what's up to all you subreddits out there? This is Mike Mills with Verity Mortgage coming to you with your mortgage answers. A lot of the questions I get these days, especially in this environment, is now a good time to refinance. Well, I've got answers for you, but first I got a couple of questions to ask you. First off, what is the reason you're trying to refinance? Are you trying to save money? Are you trying to take cash out? Are you trying to shorten your term? What are you looking to get accomplished? The next question is, what's your current rate? And how does that rate compare to market rates as they currently stand? In most cases, when we're looking at any size loan, you typically gotta save at least one percentage point on your rate in order for it to really make sense. So if your rate currently is 3.875 and the market rate is 3.5, it may not be the best idea. But if you're at 3.75 and the market rate's 2.75, you definitely should check it out and see if it makes sense. Question number three is, how much do you owe on your house? This is a big factor in determining how much money you can actually save because the lower the loan amount, typically the higher the rate difference you have to have in order to really save money. So if you have a $500,000 loan and you could lower your rate by a point or greater, you could save a pretty substantial amount of money. But if you only owe 50 or $60,000, it might take a point and a half to two points for you to really see real gains. Question number four is, how much is your house worth? This is gonna play a big role when we determine if you're gonna need funds for the transaction or not. In most refinances, you can actually roll all the costs into the loan. You don't have to bring a nickel out of pocket if you don't want, but the house has to be a certain value in order for that to happen. So when we determine whether or not you're gonna need any cash, how much your house is worth plays a big factor, and that's why we have to get an appraisal to figure that out. And the last question is, how long do you actually plan to live in your house? Because when we look at refinances and whether or not they make sense, we typically say, if you can break even on your costs in less than three years, then it's a no-brainer. If it's gonna take you three to five years, then you really need to know how long you plan on keeping that house. Because if you're gonna sell it anytime soon, you may not realize the gains versus the cost for refinancing financing the home. And if it's going to take you any more than five years to break even on your costs doing the refinance, then it's probably not a good idea because you really can't determine where you're going to be in the next five years. If you were to look back and ask yourself five years ago, if you would be where you are today, my odds are that your past self would have no idea. No way. Yes way. So anytime you think you might sell the home, you may want to reconsider trying to do a refinance. All right, now let's talk about the math. How much is this refinance gonna cost and how do I break even? Well, let's take a $300,000 loan for example. In most cases, a $300,000 loan on the actual cost is gonna be somewhere around four to $5,000. A lot of that actual cost is things like appraisals, title, surveys, lender fees. These are things that you're actually having to incur a cost in order to do the loan. Now, there's another charge or another fees that can get added to your loan to set up your escrow account. I say cost and fees, but really these are things that you're gonna have to pay anyway. So what we have to do as a lender is we now have to create and set up a new escrow account for you and kind of match what you already have in your current escrow. The good news is, is we may have to add an additional three to $5,000 to your loan to set up your escrow account, but all that means is that you're gonna get an additional three to $5,000 back from your current servicing bank. So you can take that money when it comes back after you close, you can add it back to the principal of your loan, you can pay off some credit card debt, you can go on a fancy vacation. First one's here. Whatever it is you wanna do, it's your money and your choice, but you get some money back in the transaction because once we set up your new escrow account, that money's coming back to you from the old one. All right, Mike, so how do we actually figure out when we're gonna break even? What we do is we take your actual cost, let's say it's $5,000 on that $300,000 loan we were talking about, and let's say you're lowering your point one you're lowering your interest rate one full point from 3.625 to 2.625. That's gonna save you on average about $166 a month. So we take that $5,000 and we divide it by $166 a month that means it's gonna take you about 30 months or just under three years to break even. So if you don't sell your house and you're sticking around for a long time over that three years, then it's a no brainer. You're saving money, you're lowering your costs, and you're putting money towards something else that isn't debt. Last question is, 
What type of term should I pick? Well, this is kind of a choose your own adventure type of deal. In my personal opinion, I typically tell people to not look at their loan in the sense of time, but to look at it in the sense of money. Because you can pay down your loan as fast or as slow as you want. But when you pick your term, 30 years, 20 years, 15 years, that's just the maximum amount of time that you have to pay off the loan. If you wanna pay it off faster, you absolutely can. But when we look at a 15 year loan, for example, you're gonna get a lower interest rate, but you're gonna have a higher payment because you're paying it off faster. If you look at the 30 year note, you're gonna have a little bit higher interest rate, but you're gonna have a much lower payment. So now you have a little bit more flexibility on whether or not you wanna pay it off or put that money towards something else. Then I get a lot of questions about a 20 year note. Well, the 20 year note is not my personal favorite, I think the 20 year note is kind of in between. You are gonna get a rate that's much more similar, if not exactly the same to a 30 year note, but you're gonna get a payment that's much more similar to the 15 year note. So it's kind of that in between that I don't think you're really getting a benefit of either side. Either take the 30 and get the flexibility of your payment and put an extra money somewhere else, or take the 15 so that way you're forced to have the discipline to pay that loan off faster. Either way, you're gonna come out on top. The question is up to you. Thanks guys, I appreciate your time today. Please forward and share this video if you like. Send it to your friends. If they have any questions, please give me a call. This is Mike Mills with Verity Mortgage telling everybody to be good humans and I'll see you soon.